Welcome to today's news analysis. We are doing the Indian Express Papers Chandigarh edition. Let me briefly tell you the topics that we are covering. So first we hear about the BRICS NSA meet that took place. Uh, here the NSA met the Russian and the Chinese counterparts. Okay. Besides we hear something with regards to agriculture and fertilizer subsidy that is the use of nano DAP. We'll study this more later. There is a interview of a SEBI member who talks about climate financing or climate funding uh, from an urban context. So this is obviously important from a GS3 point of view. Besides, we can always refer to the IMF data about how much funding is required, all those things. There is an opinion section on women, women related schemes and how direct benefit transfer has enabled it. There is inflation related data. Plus we have a, a statement by the prime minister who says that India has become aviation inclusive. So what are the schemes? What are the initiatives that the government has taken by which India has become aviation inclusive? So these are the topics that we are looking today. So let's cover the first one. NSA BRICS meeting. NSA means National Security Advisor. So National Security Advisor for India is Mr. Ajit Doval. And we also had the External Affairs Minister, Mr. Jay Shankar. So yes, so Mr. Ajit Doval and Jay Shankar had met with the Chinese counterpart, Mr. Wang Yi. And here some talks had happened. And Mr. Jay Shankar has given a statement to the media that is 75% of disengagement problems between India and China at the LSE line of actual control, the border area between India and China uh, is known as the line of actual control. So 75% of this issue has been resolved. It is only the remaining issue which is leading to increased militarization of the border. There is nothing new with this. Only thing is that first time it has been quantified. That is how, what is the scale of this problem? That's all. So this happened at Geneva, Switzerland. More on this will come later, right? What NSA told Mr. Putin, so Russian counterpart also over here. And I think we'll cover this here itself. It's on page 13 otherwise. So just that he, uh, the NSA advised Mr. Putin that uh, Prime Minister Modi had a meeting with the uh, Ukrainian uh, president. What was the agenda? Plus he wants close ties with Russia at the same time. And Mr. Putin has called for a bilateral meet whenever the BRICS take place. That's all. Let's move forward. Interesting news. Come October, theme based walk festival to kick off in Delhi. In the image that you see, there is a Tughlaq era monument known as Malcha Mahal. This is 14th century. 14th century means we are talking about 1300s. So, some theme based festival, the people come, they have some entertainment and a historical site. What brings, you know, what we can think from exam point of view, we're looking at GS1, art and culture. We have this heritage sites. We have these buildings and all. So what is the government doing to promote and protect it? That is one thing. So promotion and protection of this. There is an initiative known as Intact for the same. You may refer to the website over here. You may read additional details. This will be helpful for your prelims also. Then, of course, this is to invite people. Some theme is there to entertain them also. So tourism and tourism related initiatives that are there. So I have marked the PIP for the same and this is for aviation sector, by the way. Okay. So one, I got to know about this project, Pari. 
right and uh, indian art cultures which are which would be showcased under pari then there is this national culture fund and there was one more yes this one the initiatives for promoting the culture india tourist facilitator certification program uh, prasad initiative so all these things i'll mark uh, in the comment section all these links as i'm doing it let's move forward the more of political news because elections are coming up so yes so two very very important issues over here first issue that we see is with regards to power sector and the subsidy and the other one that you see over here is with regards to the fertilizer sector nano dap di ammonium phosphate so let's cover the first over here on the left side this is with regards to punjab the state but it is common to all the states of the country so now specifically with punjab let's do it you know when uh, electricity generation uh, is supplied to our homes the process is like this there is a power generator the somebody who's creating electricity right uh, hydro electricity thermal electricity somebody is making electricity this electricity is then uh, transferred to to the distribution companies discoms so punjab state uh, this body is response it's a discom they are supplying electricity they are supplying electricity to the end consumers which may be industry which may be people like us or commercial places whatever by taking tariffs right simple as that and obviously they have to make certain payments so it is the discom companies now what is happening is when the government announces subsidies the government announces subsidies then in that case of course the source of tariff may come down the consumers are not paying the tariff rather the government would be footing in the bill right now in the case of punjab what has happened is government the aam aadmi party government they said that uh, 300 units of electricity free power would be given and of course the government will then have to pay the bill for this which is rupees 1800 crores since the punjab government is not having the adequate finances it is not able to pay up okay now it's not able to pay up that means the distribution company does not have money to uh, buy electricity this means they do not have you know there are going to be power cuts plus they do not have the adequate surplus to invest in this infrastructure capabilities distribution lines etc so this may also suffer as a result okay now what the government is doing they said okay fine we don't have money so they are likely to increase taxes elsewhere for example vat on petrol diesel and raise the bus fare so these are the concerns by the way the second video when the video that really took this you know uh, promoted the channel was on the discom only it's on the youtube channel of ours let's move to the next article can nano dap replace the conventional granular version in punjab's rabi season okay so when we hear about these fertilizers we have these three nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so with phosphorus is coming from dap fine di ammonium phosphate now this di ammonium phosphate and this potassium which is coming from murate of potash they are imported and they are very expensive at least significantly more expensive than urea nitrogen which is coming from urea which is mainly domestically produced okay so the conventional dap that we are using is in the granular form so this is expensive plus there are certain supply related concerns so supply side issues are there now what the government has been doing there is an agency known as ifco they came up with the idea of nano dap this is domestic indigenously produced 
this is in the liquid form and it addresses the issue of import and the cost also so and of course the supply also a 500 ml bottle which costs 600 rupees can supply fertilizer for one acre of land while the same for granular is 1350 rupees so this will help reduce reliance on imported fertilizers that's the benefit so nano dap this is something new that you have heard today next move let's move to climate change mitigation needs funding this is the sebi interview that i was telling you sebi member a long article but yeah we can cover it quickly so what the person is saying over here is that when we come to the climate related issues or climate related issues and the issues that we have mostly it is with the people people live in urban areas and it's the urban governance you know municipalities etc which have to take care of all these issues they have to provide for let's say the excessive rain happens so drainage has to be improved right infra has to be improved so it's the responsibility of the municipalities now municipalities do not have adequate revenue generation adequate funding to run their government uh, forget about uh, the climate related issues okay so it says municipal revenues and this please note it this will be helpful later municipal revenues globally it should be 3 to 4% of country's gdp whereas in india's case it is at 0.9 to 1% of gdp so he proposes higher taxation uh, to meet the needs for example property tax may be increased so that is what the author is saying okay besides instruments like municipal bonds capital market instruments because he is a member of sebi sebi is associated with capital mar markets so municipal bonds green bonds can be encouraged through for uh, meeting the climate financing and generating that infrastructure further he advocates we should be emphasizing on the sewage treatment drain water uh, you know uh, uh, strong water drains should be there further we should be focusing on i would have a better word for this transit oriented development model also he refers to a initiative of uh, the city pune where is there, where there is a mention of harit setu setu means road highway harit means green so green passages for walking where trees are there and all those things so harit setu so putin proposes bilateral with modi under brick summit on head to be held on october 22nd and this we have already discussed let's move forward now we are on to the world section so very briefly uh, with regards to the violence israel gaza conflict uh, who evacuates 100 patients from gaza Right. so very rarely we'll hear about this and who says we need medical corridors for these evacuations plus healthcare has been infrastructure has been damaged and therefore need for medical corridors okay now let's look at the map of uh, israel also we hear about gaza so this is israel this entire thing is israel actually now israel has two pockets uh, which are dealing with the palestinian population so on the eastern side there is west bank because it is to the west of the dead sea so west bank is on the east of israel but it's west of the dead sea that's where west bank and the gaza strip and from gaza you can reach egypt and uh, dubai etc wherever you have to go okay this uh, i want to go back to this climate funding also one issue that i missed i wanted to tell you with regard to climate financing IMF had made a statement uh, quoting the International Energy Agency they said that uh, we need 2 trillion dollars annually by 2030 to meet uh, climate related issues that are going to arise so 2 trillion dollars annually are required this is this is something that you can quote i will attach the link 
for your reference you need to study this not very relevant actually i read it but not very relevant for our exam uh, sadly sitaram yachudi the communist leader passed away so we have lot of you know articles relating to that so i'm ignoring it i am focusing on this jandhan yojana the elderly have been incorporated uh, you know in respect of the income and this article over here what center can learn from the states so let's cover the first one on the which we covered yesterday actually so yesterday we heard that ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana which is a insurance based healthcare scheme provides rupees 5 lakh annual health coverage to each household so it is to have all elderly population above the age of 70 years irrespective of their income so they will be covered under jan arogya yojana and this is a significant development because please note these facts 25 only 25% of the elderly are having the safety net of a healthcare protection this scheme provides for that 80% also and this is very much important given the welfare needs of the elderly population plus this demographic dividend will fade out and all these youth that is here there'll be a bulge of elderly population okay so that then in india's context the out of pocket expenditure oop uh, which was 70% you know this means 70% of total healthcare expenditure of total health care expenditure this has come down to 50% but this still this is very very high as compared to the global average which is what it says two and a half times of the global average right so oh, that will be about 20 25% okay so that's very important now here the government needs to be cautious that previously it was it came to light that uh, the medical fraternity doctors etc they are not promoting the jan arogya yojana because obviously because uh, you know you know a private uh, profiteering had to be done for that purpose <coughs> so that needs to be taken care of anomalies with the jan arogya yojana plus the documentation that is required that needs to be streamlined to ensure better coverage okay next even if you don't read the article and just read this i think that's good enough by placing cash directly in the hands of women direct benefit transfers offer financial autonomy improving their position in the family simple today we have these government schemes right subsidies are there subsidies are given in the form of direct benefit transfer if the direct benefit transfer comes directly in, or income support directly comes into the hands of the women it is seen that the women have a tendency to spend on those articles which are crucial for the household education health care etc so their priority is that so overall that has been seen much before the dbt and much before anything else this that has been noted so it is a seen as a way of uh, bringing people out uh, out of the trap of poverty as well so so that's it and some name of the schemes are mentioned over here which the other gov you know obviously uh, this leader is from the tmc party non bjp party so he's saying states have done these initiatives center should emulate the same here he is referring to congress's mahalakshmi scheme which is taken from karnataka's gruha lakshmi a model where income is handed directly into the hands of the women and the same was taken up by telangana government and most of the schemes are sponsored by the states fully sponsored not by the center but by the states now the central government has also come up with a scheme known as lakshmir bandar and uh, he says that his state government will actually increase the allocation of this so that's the thing now we have some data with regards to gender gap fine and this is very important so let's see this uh, so he talks about india's female labor force participation rate is just 28% 28% now obviously since women constitute 50% of the population so labor force participation should be 
right so this is indicative of an anomaly with the or a discrimination that is taking place in the workplace when we look at the higher level post also every for every five men in managerial position only one is woman so one you know it's just about 20 percent then one out of three young people is not engaged in any education employment training and of this one 95 percent tend to be women so these are certain facts further india's ranking in the gender gap index is 127th out of 146 and the gender gap index is released by the world economic forum this has been asked in the upsc prelims so that's it from this article again jana arugya yojana same explainer is there uh, now this uh, explainer that we have over here on the left side japanese are conducting a research you know they are flying this plane and trying to uh, they believe that there are these spores bacteria and the fungi in the space and they may be carrying the diseases new diseases so they are trying to they are flying over and trying to get you know get in, influenced by these bacteria and the fungi they are collecting the samples okay and uh, this is the reason they are doing it because there is a disease known as kawasaki disease kawasaki is of course japanese so kawasaki disease which may cause fever rashes and in also deadly heart attacks so it's believed that this is emanating from northeast china from china it is moving to japan and from there it is crossing the pacific and affecting us california in particular and more cases in the california region of the kawasaki disease is seen so this mystery they are trying to address how is this disease over here is affecting them now let's come to the economy section so we get inflation related data it says that the retail inflation edges up to 3.65 percent by the way who says who brings out this retail data so retail inflation is coming from the nso and it is says that it is below the four percent mark so this is the rpi's norm to of inflation targeting keeping inflation four percent plus minus two percent fine so this data is released by the nso further it says the combined food price inflation has increased to 5.66 percent while cereals eggs all this is six percent okay these are volatile they keep, keep going up and down headline retail inflation inflation the normal inflation is 3.554 percent and the core inflation is about 3.5 percent september 2024 not much difference over here normally there is a big difference between core and retail inflation headline inflation now core inflation basically does not have the volatile items that's it okay uh, now uh, satellite based tolling system is coming up so global navigation satellite system tolling transition to take place so most likely in future we will not have these tolls rather when we travel some satellite would be tracking us there may be a chip in the car and how much we have traveled based on that money would be deducted automatically prime minister modi in his address at icao international civil aviation organization agency which is a specialized agency of the un please note this fact specialized agency of the un he says that india has become aviation inclusive and he says india is today a strong pillar of the global civil uh, global civil aviation ecosystem so let me say what all facts he has mentioned over here so he says one is that we are rapidly increasing our capability we have imported about 1200 aircrafts there is a demand for that we are having uh, maintenance repair organizations uh, overhaul centers mro centers that is aircrafts will go bad etc so mros will be there so investments are being done further emphasis on air connectivity in tier 2 as well as tier 3 cities is being done and for this there is a scheme known as ude desh ka aam nagrik udan now as far as the exam goes all you have to do is prepare two questions one is about this scheme regional connectivity scheme and the other is about issues with the aviation sector and the steps that are being taken by the government